Welcome back. In this lesson, I want to talk about how to work with the four personality styles. So first up, the driver or the director. And as we have been talking, the key characteristics are drivers are independent, self-confident, ambitious and driven. They like to be in charge. This is the key and they like to make the decisions. So you're going to find drivers to be dominant, goal oriented, assertive, task driven, fast paced, always taking the initiative and it's a business like attitude. So that appearance, very functional, as I mentioned, business-like. We've talked about the pace is fast, decisive. Priority is all about the results, the task. It's not as much about the relationship. Drivers are gonna seek productivity, so how do you support their goals? If you have a driver, you've gotta be to the point. Drivers fear loss of control, and so under tension, they're gonna get more difficult sometimes, dictate, uh, they become more assertive, all right? So be aware of that, so they wanna be in charge irritated by inefficiency and indecision. This is gonna drive a driver crazy. So obviously the shortcomings can be a little too demanding or be seen as pushy or critical, impatient, overwhelming, and maybe even unfeeling. So for decisions with a driver, you've got to give them options and probable outcomes and let them decide. And let me give you a little you know, input here. If you are a driver yourself and you're working with another driver, you're going to butt heads if you can't kind of rise above and realize that you're working with another dominant personality style and it's okay to let them do that. And I'll joke around sometimes as a high D myself that I think there's power and you ultimately get what you want as a high D when you really acquiesce and let the driver that you're working with make the decision. So give a driver the facts, the bottom line. They want to be decisive. They, they want to get right to the point let them make the decisions and you have to pull back because you want to do that you have a tendency to do that right so as a driver working with the driver really understand that give them the bottom line be brief avoid making generalizations you know, don't repeat yourself set deadlines be responsible for your actions focus on the results focus on solutions rather than the problem don't try to take that control back and don't make excuses have a clear direction and make you let these guys know any changes that are in the schedule or procedures and you'll have a great experience working with a director. Let's talk about the promoter. So as I go through these, clearly if you are also that same category, that same uh, that's your personality style, you understand them. That's why you're always going to have instant rapport with people. If you're a promoter and you meet a promoter, you're, you're instantly going to have some rapport, but Part of the problem is going to be, depending on the strengths and the weaknesses, a promoter is never is going to always be about let's go do something fun and and and, and go you know uh, and not maybe focus on the on on the task at hand and always be looking for the change and you know I'm bored right. So those characteristics are talkative, gregarious, energetic, fun-loving, impulsive, spontaneous, and undisciplined with time. Right. Generally, a promoter is fashionable and stylish in their appearance. Their pace is more fa is fast, also like a like a D, a director, but more spontaneous. The priority is more about relationships uh, and interacting with people, and they, but they seek recognition. They want you to support their ideas. They like you to be stimulating. They fear a loss of prestige and under tension. Promoters are going to be may attack and, and really become more sarcastic. Uh, generally, want to be admired or you know people to see that status sort of deal. Uh, and then they get irritated by boredom and routine, right? So just general shortcomings, no concern for details, disorganized, maybe a little pushy or egotistical if they're unbalanced, you know, an, un uh, an unbalanced or really high uh, P uh, promoter or I, impatient and unrealistic. So for decisions, a promoter is going to be more about testimonials and incentives. Decisions are spontaneous. They're not like a thinker analyst is going to look at all the details and a driver is going to take decisive action, uh, a promoter is going to be more like, let's just go do this, right? So how do you relate and communicate a little bit better? You have to be enthusiastic. You need to be involved. You have to be flexible, be accepting of change, if, especially if you, it's hard for you to change because you are not a high eye yourself. Focus on creative ideas and solutions. Talk about dreams and possibilities share your experience and experiences, let them talk and ask questions, focus on the positives, don't interrupt them, and avoid overloading them with details, all right? Let's move on to the supporter, the relator, the high S. 
characteristics again, agreeable, likable, friendly, great listeners, cooperative, loyal, patient, considerate, warm, and sensitive, right? True supporters. Appearance is usually more casual and conforming. The pace is going to be a little slower and easygoing. The priority for a supporter is maintaining relationships. They're seeking more attention. You need to support their feelings. These folks are going to get their feelings hurt easier. They like you to be pleasant. They fear confrontation. So a supporter, if you're a high D and you're working with a supporter and you want things to be fast paced and why aren't they making a decision, this is you're going to have a tendency to feel overbearing to a person that's a supporter. So this is the whole point of understanding these personality styles. If you get that that's how you can tend to be and you're not working with someone who likes that style, you need to change. You need to conform so that the person appreciates that they're being heard, that you understand how to work with them and you don't, you don't come across as pushy. Uh, all right, so they fear confrontation. Under tension, they're going to submit and acquiesce and kind of you know, go into a little bit of a cocoon. They want to be liked. They're irritated by insensitivity and people who are impatient, which is going to be you if you're a high D and you're not, getting, you're not picking up what I'm putting down right here. So some shortcomings again for that supporter, lacks direction, too eager to please, unstructured in efforts, they tend to give in more, they're going to go with the flow, right? So the decisions for them, if you're in a, trying to get them to close and, and make a decision, you have to give them reassurance and assurances. Decisions are really measured and considered and uh, to, to relate better and communicate better, you have to be friendly and personal, positive and polite sincere and keep working on building that trust. Listen more than you talk, which is hard if you're a high I or a D. Listen actively. Focus on the people part, the relationship. Uh, take the time to provide clarification. Create a comfortable, relaxing you know, environment overall in the climate. And create an experience they can relate to. Express your interest in them and what you expect from them. Definitely avoid being confrontational, overly aggressive, or rude, or they're just not going to want to work with you. They're going to shut down. Okay, that brings us to the analyzer, the thinker. So again, those characteristics are serious, orderly, systematic, perfectionist, precise. These are the folks that seek facts and data. They're cautious in their actions, and they're going to always be checking and double-checking and triple-checking things for accuracy. These are the people who are going to read every single line in your forms. Most people don't even read all the contracts in the forms that you're going to give them, but a thinker, a high analyst type personality, that high C is going to take the time to read them. So be prepared for that. Be aware of that. You might want to give that, a person that has that personality style all that paperwork up front. They'll enjoy that. All right. So let's go through a few more things and I'll, I'll bring up a few more ideas around working with all these styles. So appearance is, is more formal and conservative. The pace is definitely slow and systematic. The priority is the process for the thinker. It's all about the task. Just like a driver is task oriented, but they're more on quick action and results, the thinker is about the task and the process and the system and the accuracy, right? So support their thoughts. They want you to be precise. They fear embarrassment, and under tension, they definitely withdraw and avoid. They want you to be correct. They want to have the correct information, and they're definitely irritated by surprises and unpredictability. So shortcomings, they're going to avoid risk. There may be a tendency to procrastinate if they don't have all the details. Being overcritical, they may appear unemotional and too serious. So for decisions, give them the facts the details and the documentation. So when you're closing a thinker in the beginning when you're in a consultation with a buyer or seller and you realize that you have a thinker, you need to ask the questions and you keep asking the questions about what do they need to have? What information, details, and facts do they need before they're going to decide? Because if you don't know what that is, number one, and number two, if you don't provide it, then they're never going to, you'll just be working with them forever. So you have got to do a really thorough uh, discovery and a consultation in the beginning to get to the bottom line of I'm not making a decision until I know these five things and if you know what those five things are and when you're coming back and you've got the indication that they want to buy that house you come back to those five things and it helps them 
recognize a couple things. One, you really heard them. You understand what information they needed, and it's harder for them to object, okay? So decisions are going to be deliberate, but only after they have all the facts and the things that are important to them. So again, communication uh, tips here for a thinker. And again, if you are an analyzer, you get this. So you're just going to be that person that provides this. If you're a thinker and you provide too much detail to a promoter, they're going to be bored with that. Okay. So I, I hope you're starting to see the nuances here. This is why I want you to really focus on who you are first, because it's going to be easy for you to relate to people that are like you, but you have to really dig deep and start to have an awareness around other styles and what they're looking for. And that's what this whole module is about for you. So focus on the facts and details, be logical. This is all your communication tips, be formal and thorough, be organized, detached and calm. You're basically mirroring what it is that they, they prefer. Be accurate and use critical thinking. State the facts briefly and concisely. Don't be overly friendly. Minimize the pep talk or the emotional language. Be patient, persistent and diplomatic. And then you'll be able to relate to a really well to a thinker. All right, so the last little document that we have for you, and this is one of my favorite documents. I carried this around with me for a long time. And get this in the overview and downloads if you haven't already. It's just called the behavior, behavioral style matrix. And what we did was just put, once again, everything that we've talked about here in the director, promoter, supporter, analyzer, or the disc, uh, you know, other ways, other words to call all these. And we've put it all together in a thing that you can carry around. It's a bit of your cheat sheet for the personality styles. So it covers the characteristics and the pace and all the things that we've talked about and, and for decisions and so on. So I think you'll like that. That's a document that you can use. It kind of consolidates everything that I've just covered here and in, in some of the previous lessons. All right, join me in the next lesson. We'll get into a little bit on the basics of NLP.